assalamu alaikum students i hope you all will be doing very well i'm back with a new lecture which is the lecture number second for class 11th and the topic is laws and coefficient of friction so let's start with today's topic before going further let's have a quick recap about the previous lecture in which we talk about the friction and the basic types of the friction there was static friction then limiting friction then kinetic friction and there was sub two types of the kinetic friction which was sliding friction and then a rolling friction now in the end of the previous lecture i was talking about a graph between the frictional force and the applied force so you can see in the slide left bottom corner there's a graph which shows a direct relationship between the applied force and the frictional force in the initials you can say there is a linearity of the graph this linearity of a graph shows actually a direct relationship between the frictional force and that of the applied force but this direct this linearity this linearity of the graph or the direct relationship has got certain limit up to that limit the curve is not now decreasing and then it has a got static or a constant value for the kinetic friction so what we observe here that a static friction has got a maximum value the maximum value or we can say the maximum value of the static force of the static friction is known as limiting friction that we talked about in the previous lecture where that whenever there is a maximum value of the static friction and that maximum value of static friction is nothing but a limiting friction so you can observe from this curve it shows that the limiting friction has got the maximum value and then there is a decrease in the you know force of friction then this for the kinetic friction it remains constant when the body is now in the motion so let's now talk about here the laws of limiting friction the first law of the limiting friction is the magnitude of the force of limiting friction is directly proportional to the normal reaction now make sure that you have understood the concept of limiting friction limiting friction is nothing it's a type of a static friction but the maximum value of a static friction is known as limiting friction so in other words you can say that the maximum value of static friction is directly proportional to the normal reaction now what is this normal reaction you can see a an example i have taken a block a horizontal block is on the surface this is a block this is a surface which has black color and on on this surface there is a block now the weight of this block is acting downwards which has been shown by the arrow w is equal to m into g which is mass into acceleration that weight is acting downwards and this surface is acting an upward force on the block that has been represented by the r so this upward force which actually this surface exerts on this block this is known as normal reaction so this normal reaction is this normal reaction you can see in this example this normal reaction and that that of the weight acts along the same line that means the line of action for the normal reaction and the weight is same so therefore in this case what we will observe that this normal reaction will be equal to the weight of a body so in other words we can say the weight is being neutralized back by the or force means the reaction force right in this case but but is it true in all the cases that this normal reaction and that of the weight of a body acts along the same line of action or are they equal in every case no it isn't because i have taken the next example where there is an inclined plane inclined plane is a plane which has been inclined with certain angle so you can see here there is an inclined plane and there is a black block on this plane so you can see the weight is acting downwards towards the ground and there is a normal reaction which is which has got certain angle so you can observe over here that the line of action for the weight and the normal reaction in the another case is not same so we can say here that the normal reaction and the weight of body will not be equal in this case so remember this thing normal reaction and weight of a body is not equal in all the cases but sometimes they may be equal like in this case horizontal case right so the first law says that this force of friction the force of the limiting friction is directly proportional to the normal reaction now the next law which is the direction of the force of limiting friction is always opposed to that of the direction of a motion of a body in the previous lecture i talked about this that the direction of this limiting friction every friction whether it will be static friction limiting friction or the kinetic friction it will be always opposed to that of the motion of a body suppose that if a body is moving along the right direction so the frictional force will be along the left direction so in other words we can say as we studied in case of static friction Uh, the the static friction is equal to the applied force but when the body is in a static it is in the rest right so here the second law of limiting friction says that the direction of this limiting friction will always be opposed to that of the motion of a body it will not it may or may not be opposed to that of the applied force but for sure it will be opposed to that of the motion of a body now the third law third law says that this force of limiting friction is independent upon the area of contact as long as the normal reaction between the bodies in contact remains same 
or constant so what does it mean it means say that if we have the two bodies suppose that we have the two bodies both are in the same both are in the contact with the surface same surface any smooth surface let's suppose that i have a you know smooth surface i have placed the two blocks on that surface so one block has got a length of 20 cm and another has got a length of 30 cm let me make sure that both of them has got equal normal reaction as long as the normal reaction is constant remember this thing so what we will observe there will be no change in the force of friction limiting friction will be same in both the cases so we can say that there will be no much dependency of this limiting friction in case of an area of con area of the contact between the bodies that means agar ek body mein area of contact surface ke sath zyada hota hai dusri mein kam hota hai so it will not depend it will not you know make dependency the or limiting friction upon that right so limiting friction will not now depend upon the area of contact between the surfaces but fourth law actually says that what are the factors what are the parameters for which actually this limiting friction depends fourth law says that this force of limiting friction depends upon the nature of the materials of the surface in contact asal mein fourth law hame ye kehta hai ki what are those parameters on which actually this limiting friction depends it strictly depends upon the nature of the material suppose that we have the material one is you know uh, one is perfectly smooth another is roughness in one surface there is a roughness another surface there is a smooth so we will observe that in case of a surface where there is smoothness there will be lesser friction but in case of a surface which has got roughness so we will observe there will be greater friction so therefore we can say that this force of friction depends upon the nature of surfaces of a material in contact between the bodies so greater is the smoothness of a body lesser is the friction greater is the roughness of a body lesser greater is the friction so let's talk about now next the next coefficient of friction what is now this coefficient of friction as we studied in the first law of limiting friction we says that this force of friction is directly proportional to the normal reaction now uh, this force of limiting friction which is directly proportional to the normal reaction r so if we will conclude over here the proportionality we will get over here a constant which is mu s over here basically s is in the subscript so it becomes f is equal to mu s into r where this mu s is here coefficient of proportionality and this coefficient of proportionality over here is known as coefficient of limiting friction because we are talking about the limiting friction now from the above first equation we can get the value of this mu s this coefficient of limiting friction it will become equal to the f divided by r what is f f is the limiting friction and r is the normal reaction so we will we can define this coefficient of limiting friction as a ratio of the force of the limiting friction and that of the normal reaction so this uh, coefficient of this limiting friction becomes force upon force because friction force is already in force normal reaction is again in force so therefore force upon force that means it become it will become unitless quantity so we can say that this coefficient of limiting friction is unitless as well as dimensionless when there is no unit so therefore no dimension next is what are the parameters over which this coefficient of friction coefficient of limiting friction depends so let's talk about uh, the parameters over which it depends the first is it depends upon the nature of the surfaces in contact so what i mean by say it i mean say that if the surface is uh, wet there will be less friction if the surface is dry there will be more friction similarly if the surface is you know rough if the surface is you know unpolished there will be greater friction but in case in case of in smooth polished or wet surface what we observe that there will be lesser friction we have experienced it in our daily life like if we are you know moving on on a surface which is you know wet we have observed that if there is some sort of water on a ground surface we experience slippage over there so why we experience the slippage because there is a decrease in the friction so when there is a decrease in the friction we experience slippage that's why we fell down on the ground similarly somewhere you will see that when the vehicle is moving on a ground which is which, is, which has got wetness or which is very much polished you will experience that you will see over there that this vehicle will be slip will be showing slippage over there the slippage will be due to the decrease in the friction so from this conclusion we can say that it depends upon the nature of the surfaces so greater is the you know smoothness less is the friction or in other words we can say that greater is the polish polish polishness of a surface or the surface is wet so lesser is the friction so similarly vice versa for if there is an you know rough road there is you know uh, dry surface or there is unpolished surface there will be greater friction now the second parameter which it depends that is the material of the surface in contact what are the different materials that are in contact let let's take an example of the two different roads one is an urban road which is purely magnetized which has got a smooth surface and another is an you know rural road which is earthen road simple made up of the simple soil 
and the and we observe that the material in case of an earthen road is soil but in case of an that you know uh, uh, urban road it has been magnetized the material is your asphalt you will observe that in case of an that magnetized road you will experience the less friction that in that than that of the earthen road in the earthen road we will experience more friction so therefore it depends upon the material of the surface in contact also now next as we saw in the graph that you know when the uh, in the graph we saw that after the limiting friction the curve was decreasing and that it remains constant for the kinetic friction so therefore now when the body is in motion now the frictional force which will come in action that is known as the kinetic friction so therefore uh, when the body is in the motion we will replace now f by ft because f was your limiting friction now the body is in motion so it will be represented by the uh, frictional force which is known as kinetic friction and also the mu s will be replaced by mu k because mu s represented the maximum value of the static friction or the kinetic or the kinetic friction so here this mu k represents the coefficient of kinetic friction as in the graph you saw that there was a decrease then the graph was decreasing then so we can say that from that graph the kinetic friction is less than that of the limiting friction so from the above equation it says that fk is less than that of f where fk is the you know kinetic friction and f represents the limiting friction so from the above equation it means say that the value of the kinetic friction is always less than that of the limiting friction so therefore this coefficient of the kinetic friction will always be again also less than that of the value of this yeah coefficient of limiting friction so from this equation we can conclude that the coefficient of kinetic friction is always less than that of the coefficient of limiting friction thank you guys this was all about today's lecture in the next lecture we'll be talking about you know angle of friction and angle of repose have a wonderful day